DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. It's USA from RPM. Our name says it all. Get the latest hits while they're the hottest. With Top Hits USA, you'll have the track for sure. Visit TopHitsUSA.com or call 800-521-2537 and get a free demo. All right, we're back for session number two tonight. It is Monday night, and we are talking now with the remix side of things. JD's with us tonight, and we've been talking country music. If you missed that, go down to the description. You can go and click on that. And he shared some songs and artists and such that might help you on your dance floor here in 2017, which we'll be probably seeing this unless you're watching it right now. JD, let's talk remix. Now, let's, let's kind of back up a little bit. What got you into doing the whole remix scene? Um... My, well, it all started with DJing, and I am, I'm blessed to say I've, uh, some of you guys may know a guy named Larry D. Larry D., you know, God bless that man, because he's the one who got me in and showed me the ropes of a lot of things and uh, opened up my eyes and, and really kind of pointed me in this path. And then uh, I've always edited video and gotten into video and understood video editing, so I was taking songs from, from the music pools and, and re- re-editing videos uh, around them this was 12 years ago or so and i uh, was starting to mix a video that way and uh came, ac- came across a guy named wild bill who is the program director for x mix and uh he hit me up one day he's like dude can you come edit videos for us and this was 06 07 right in that ballpark and uh so if you're using x mix and you're getting their videos most likely it's stuff that i've done um, about 80% of the X mix videos are done by me. Wow. A few other are done by uh, a couple other editors, but a big chunk of the X mix stuff is done by me. Um, there's a lot of the country stuff is done by me. And another guy named uh, DJ Skills, Matt Terusi, he's an amazing, amazing remixer. Um, but so I got on with X mix. Um, from editing video, I started to dabble into the audio side of things and uh, you know, got some very harsh but real feedback from other people that were already doing it that who I looked up to, DJ Skills being one of them, um, and a couple other DJ Larry D being another one, and, and Wild Bill himself being another one, and, and DJ Serg being another one, and and uh, uh, Rectangle DJ Rectangle another one, and you know a lot of these guys that are um, that were already doing what I wanted to learn how to do. I reached out to them and I started sending them my stuff. Mm-hmm. Stuff and going, hey, I know this isn't up to. I can hear it. It's not up to quality. Why is it not up to quality? And then they start saying, hey, did you do this? Do this. Watch this YouTube video. Do this. Watch this YouTube video. Do this. And then it got to the point where you know I was building building my own edits to the quality that they you know, and then it just kind of grew from there. Mainly, you know, it all came basically all came down to I got tired of this, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to play other DJ stuff. I wanted to play stuff that I could say I remixed. When when you're when you're saying that there was some things that just weren't right, was it is it more of a was it something gear related that you were in your mix, or is it just the the way you're you're putting the composition together again? What I mean by that, I don't want anybody ever to get stuck on gear. Like I have to have this piece of gear, or I you know I have to have this uh, piece of software. You can use Pro Tools, you can use Fruity Loops, you can use Ableton. You know, those are the big three right there. You know, if you have a controller, I use you know most of the time I use a lot of my mouse. So I don't even use my keyboard that my MIDI keyboard that much for it. So it's it's not about um, any specific piece of gear. It had to do with knowing how production works in a studio type of aspect. Once you learn how music's constructed in a studio type of aspect, then be 
then becoming a producer and building your own tracks becomes even easier. Uh, and that's the thing is, especially as I do build a lot of country edits and uh, what, um, so I'm trying to make things match up as perfectly I can without, so when I don't get those questions, hey, can you play the original? Because they don't really, can't tell that because the drums are so intertwined with the original track that they can't tell the difference. Because I use a lot of master tracks with uh, with country. I don't get the opportunity to get a lot of acapellas. You mentioned earlier with the drums before we were on air that, that you like to match the drums up and you were going, you were throwing out names of, of some, of, of some drum pr- production companies, companies that produce drum sets. Why is that important? Well, because it matches the kick up. The big thing is matching your kick and snare up or at least layering them. So they, uh, you can't, you, they sound like the one that's already in the track. You know, your, your two, your, your one and two beat are, are the predominant beats in, in it. And, uh, and so, like a, like the pearl, the pearl kick and the Yamaha kick, the twenty, the twenty four inch kick for Yamaha is a, uh, it's it's got this very earthy, very bottom tone thing that fits country very well. So finding these, um, a great VST. Here we go. I'll do a plug. A great VST to use in your, in your, um, if you are starting to do edits, is Easy Drummer, um, and because you can go through and you can select what I want this kick. And then you listen to that kick and then you listen to the master track and oh, that's that's pretty close. Maybe I can tune it a little bit and it allows you to tune the kick too. So it's a very great uh, VST to, to use to build, kind of, I use to build country edits because the, they have all the different kits there. And that's what's, that's what's important to me is finding, finding the right kit that was used in the studio or, or that if they did not use a live drummer, but most countries still, I can tell, use the live drummer because the computer's perfect, but the drummer's just a smidgen off, so you have to reline things up a little bit. So, or they're using a VST to, to make it sound like a live drummer, and everything's not perfectly lined up. And you have to go through, and you have to re warp because I use Ableton re warp, reline up the warp markers to make it all fit. But that's you know, if people want to ask me those in technical deep questions, you can find me on Facebook, and I'll uh, I'll team view. We can sit there and build an edit together. I don't care. Because there's there's no secrets to this. It's 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 all pretty it's all pretty easy stuff. And the production is the same whether you're remixing country, whether you're remixing hip hop, whether you're mixing EDM. Productions, productions, productions. No matter what genre you want to remix, the concept's the same across the board. Earlier, you were also talking about with these adding the drum to the beginning of some of these songs and such. The idea that you weren't matching the harmonic mixing, kind of talk about that again a little bit of, of how that fit into your, when you're mixing and you've added a longer drum intro. So Dave, that is a easy drummer, easy drummer. Oh, okay. um, it's a great VST. It's I think like 150 bucks. It will work for any plugin. That's just to answer that. Yeah, please. Harmonic, so when you mix country and this is you're mixing country, you're not going to use something with the drum intro, which gives you a 30 p, 32 beat non harmonic intro. Then I would highly advise you to pitch mix or mixing key country um, if you're going to do that. It just makes it hard because uh, you have to really do a pre programmed set at that point. You know what songs you're going to play in what order because if you're mixing on the fly, it just doesn't sound great if you're not mixing in key and mixing country. Um, unless you're using a redrummed country track that uh, works very well, and, and that's the biggest reason I started building the remixed country, the, the redrum country tracks with with the 32 beat intro, is because I'm sure other DJs are coming across. You come across these country uh, edits and remixes out there that all all someone did was take a hip hop beat and drag it across the whole background of the song, and it just sounds horrible. Um, so when you, when I rebuild country, I actually go four beat every, uh, what is it? Uh, 32 beats by 32 beats, put it in a, in a, in a four measure box. And then I reline all the drums up and then I reline all the kicks and relayer all the kicks with my kicks in it. So it tricks your human ear into thinking those were the original drums anyway. Uh-huh. 
Very yeah, nice. So yeah, I, I, I was wondering how you, when you talked about that earlier, it's like, okay, so what do you do when you get into the song and, and uh, such, if you do that overlay? Well, that, your, intro, your intro gives you that, that, that slice time, that 32 beats to mix into the country track and then into the harmonics so you don't have to worry about pitch mixing. You can just loop your last eight beats of the 32 bar beats that into the fill and then away you go. And then, you know, or you can echo out into the fill and away you go. So you don't have to worry about mat pitch mixing all night long. With that 32 beat intro or outro, if you've got it on the other side, would it matter if I would say what we mentioned earlier about mixing into some maybe 90s type uh, rap or what have you, if I wanted to go and, and switch genres, is there a big difference between a, a kind of a, a, a drum background track for a country song as opposed to maybe a, um, a hip hop song or a pop song? I mean, not really. The only difference is you might have a little, you have to watch out for tuned, your tuned 808 kicks. But I mean, other than that, you know. Uh, what would that be for people who are not familiar with the, the 808 kicks? Uh, a tuned 808 kick. So, so okay, we're diving into uh, kind of how I organize myself. So I have one folder of 808s. In that folder, I'll have, I think I have 3,500 different 808 kicks. Um, and and they're all organized by what key they're in, because um, and then they're all organized by if they're tuned or untuned, and then how long my attack and delay is. I can I can set all that, so I can take this sample, drop it in to a and use just attack and to make it fit. If I have a tuned 808 at the beginning of a song, it's still going to set. If I'm mixing something on opposite ends of the harmonic wheel, it's still going to sound horrible. So that's what you need to know. If you're using a tuned 808 or untuned 808, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That it does. I, I'm assuming people know what an 808 is. Uh, I'm assuming. Quite, quite a few do, but there, it's one of those things that, that's why I, I try to have things defined or, you know, ask people to define that because it makes it a little easier because there's always someone in the crowd who's new and, and wanting to, you know, hey, wow, what's that? And then they'll message you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and hopefully, you know, 808 is that boom that is prevalent in a lot of hip hop music. I mean, I mean, Black Eyed Peas talked about it. Make that 808. Uh, yeah. So I mean, it's it's just basically it's it's that it's that kick with that that oomph behind it that that bass that bass behind it. So. Which that definitely sounds different than many of the kicks from a traditional like you were saying the Yamaha or Pearl yeah. bass drum, which still has a kick, but definitely a different sound to that. Now you've done you've done the remixing with some country music. Now have you done some you other genres with your remixing you know uh, yeah i mean my big thing when i mix is i just i'm to the point where i want to show people hey you know you gotta you still have this idea that country isn't mixable or country isn't you know uh, can't be fun for a dj to mix and it's just this boring thing but we talked about this earlier i mean you take a song as simple as a Here's a, a Miranda Lambert and Carrie Underwood, something bad, is the exact same key, an exact same uh, tempo almost as Hypnotized by B. E. Smalls. And uh, I even did a remix of it. And uh, you, can, you, can, you can lay over um, the Hypnotized beat with that something bad by Carrie Underwood and Miranda Lambert. And it fits perfectly. I mean, it's like they belong together. That's how well it fits. So another one would be uh, cheese country with uh, with uh, uh, pour some sugar on me by Def Leppard are almost the exact same song with the exact same guitar riff. It's hmm. scary how well they one's in the major, one's in the minor. But when you when you trance when you when you're in the when you're in the mix and you filter, the human ear can't even hear the difference. Very so, cool. Um, so you you can mix you can cross mix country into into classic rock, into even new hip hop stuff. I mean, the Dirt Road Anthem, which was written by Brantley Gilbert, Colt Ford, um, and a buddy of mine named Jason, uh, Justin Ko, um, out of Five Star Productions, they wrote Dirt Road Anthem, which Ludacris was on a couple of years back. And uh, it's basically a hip hop song. Um, and Jason Aldean sang that, and it's one of his biggest selling songs. For sure. Uh, you know, and but it's like 68 BPM. So you, you're right in that, excuse me, that 70 BPM trap range if you wanted to go into trap from there. So it's, um, 
Jason Aldean, Burning It Down, is the exact same song as uh, um, Poison, Every Rose Has Its Thorn. They'll literally lay on top of each other and mash up perfect. Hmm. Interesting. So even it's just about knowing your knowing your music and and then seeing what fits. Knowing a, a mixed in key, another big tool I use. You you know it's knowing how to pitch mix and harmonic mix. If you're going to do a pre built set, helps a lot. Let's let's talk about the tools now. And I know you said earlier it's not about the tools, but yet I mean, you've got. I'm sure there's some things that are your favorites to use, and you've mentioned a couple of those. Uh, Let's kind of go through some of the other tools that you use when you're creating your, your mixes. Um, so my big predominant tools are I'm an Ableton guy and don't, don't uh, know anyone think that pro tools isn't amazing because it is. Um, or don't, don't sleep on Fruity Loops either because Fruity Loops can put out some amazing stuff also. So it's not about the software you use. It's about knowing the process, knowing where to add compression, knowing where to use uh you know, good equalization and good mastering of your tracks and 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 little tips and, and tricks like that. Um, but VSTs, some of the plugins I use just make life easier. Like Easy Drummer makes my life easier. Um, Contact makes my life easier. It's just it just speeds up the process from it being uh, oh, drag every single wave file in and line everything up to here's this big old MIDI clip that's already built that I can tuned to how I need it to be instead of it. Instead of, instead of it, when I first started off years and years ago, it would take me five hours to do an edit. You know, I got it down to under an hour now. Wow. I can, I, just a matter of, of time, you know, the more you do, the better you get. And uh, so, yeah, Easy Drummer is a great one. Um, waves, if you can get the Waves bundle, it's expensive. But the L3 limiter is amazing. Um, I think it's like 150 bucks on, on your mastering chain. Um, Slith, another great uh, so studio linked VSTs. Some of their stuff they put out, their Raptor 64 I use is, is amazing. Um, they have some really great VSTs there for contact. Um, I use, uh, I use complete 10 also. So I have a ton of, uh, of native instrument stuff, but I'm an Ableton guy. I use Ableton. Um, to build my edits, the audio stuff. And then in the video side of things, I use uh, Premiere Pro by Adobe. Yeah, that was, that was my next question, was getting into the video now. When you said about an hour to do a remix, that's the audio side of it. Now, what about the video side? How much time is involved with doing a, say if you're going to be doing a music video, you've, you've, do you you know, take me through the process of that. Do you do the audio first, then the video, or what do you do? Yeah, you, know, you do the audio first, and then... Um, and then I'm re-edit the video around the on the simplest thing, a simple intro, outro, re-edit. Now I'm running a dual Xeon. Let's not get it twisted because I spent some some pretty money on uh, on on my computer. So I'm running a dual 22 core Xeon, so 44 cores, 72 gigs of RAM. You know, five five SSD drives, all in a RAID. Um, I can compress an HD video in about 220 right around there two minutes sorry the dog's walking over my cord there folks i apologize um i can compress an hd video in about two minutes and 20 seconds but i mean the actual build the video itself 30 40 minutes by the time you go through the video reline everything up depending on what it is if it's a dance video and you have to time stretch it, it could take me a lot longer because i have to speed up the video and make sure it all lines up again with the new tempo of the song and there's a lot more into video editing than, than it can, uh, they can, than it, uh, it's, it can be a lot more time consuming depending on the track. Right. You got a, a dance track is going to take me a lot longer than a straightforward country edit track. Then, uh, you know, that's something that's stayed in the original tempo. It's going to be a lot quicker to reline up the words, splice everything up, you know, fill in your gaps and then recompress, mm -hmm. you know, 20 minutes. 30 minutes on something like that tops where versus if I get something crazy that was originally a hundred BPM song. Now it's 128 because they, you know, and now it's a dance track. It's going to take me a lot longer to re-edit that video around that remix. That's 128 BPM than it would be to do um, if it wasn't. 
you have to restretch the restretch the video out and make sure it, it fits. It, like the last thing I want to see in video is people talking when the words aren't actually going on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's so. And, 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 see, I, let's be honest. We've seen videos out there, and I, I'm not trying to be mean. You know, I'm, I. But it just shows a lack of. Hey, I didn't put enough time into my work. I just, you know, if you're gonna do something, do it right. Spend some time, reline it up. I know. Trust me. I. I can remember the days where it took me, I did one song and it took me seven, eight hours to get the audio done and the video done. I remember those days and it was frustrating and it still didn't come out the way I wanted. But, you know, reach out. The best thing I can say if you're into remixing, reach out to the people that uh, you want to learn from, you know, and most of them are going to, a big chunk of us uh, production DJs all know each other. You know, there's only a group. If you really look at your music libraries, there's maybe 50 or 60 top editors in the country and reach out to those guys, you know, find the guys that are like Rob, Razor Rob, if you're into doing, you know, trap it or uh, twerk edits and that, he makes some amazing edits. Reach out to Rob and go, hey, you know, this is what I want to do. I really like your stuff. You take me through your process. Or, you know, if you want to do country mixes, come hit me up. I'm, I'll be happy to at least start pointing you in the right direction. And uh, I mean, you have to take some of your own initiative, obviously, but yeah. I can't do all the work for you. At least I can I can get you pointed in the right direction, so it doesn't take you as long on that learning curve. For sure, for sure. JD, now if people wanted to hear some of your uh, mixes and such, where is a spot that they could go and check some of that out? Right on Facebook. Follow me on Facebook. Get me on Facebook, Joshua Dirksen. Um, it, right now, um, I do have a YouTube channel too. You can check out some of the stuff there, um, and you can hit me up. Hit me up on Facebook. I'll answer all these questions for you. Um, right now, I'm big into mixing, making twerk country edits, and that's another whole other story on that. Um, <laughs> people laugh when I say that. I it just doesn't. It, see, it wouldn't be the two like, words I put together. <laughs> what twerk country? I mean, what's what's wrong with twerk country? Nothing. If um, you know, if the, you know, if she's cute enough, I suppose there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Well, you know, these buckle bunnies want to shake their rear ends. When once the dance floor is packed and you're hitting twelve o'clock, one o'clock, and you've got to, nobody can swing dance, nobody can two step. That's true. They all, they all want to shake their and, and the last thing I want to do if I'm at my residency is play hip hop because we're not a hip hop club. I got to stay in the format. But these girls are coming up. Hey, can you play broccoli? Can you play? Uh, can you play get low? Well, no, but hey, I've got this twerk country song of Country Girl Shake It for me with, uh, you know, you know, I've sampled booty, 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 rocking everywhere. And, you know, so it, you build these twerk country tracks and they work. It's still country, but it's got this hip hop influence. <laughs> You know, uh, that's all, that would be very interesting. Very interesting. And, and, and for the people, the, for the people that are in the chat right now, um, hit me up on Facebook. Um, I've got a, a recent tour country mix I did of a uh, Dustin Lynch "See in Red." You can kind of see what it feels like. Uh, and uh, some, if you dig through a lot of my videos uh, on, on my Facebook page, you can dig through um, and see a lot of some of the tour country I did, kind of some of the straightforward edits I did, and things like that. You know. So twerk country came out of this this void of once again I didn't want to have to play hip hop in a club that I was it was a country yep. club, but um, was stuck. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I remember it was night, and you know the owner came, don't play any more of that rap crap in here, and you know, and so okay, I'll, I'm gonna play. I'll go home and make a twerk country edit. And here you go. Voila. It is still country, really. It is. I remember those days playing on that country night, and yeah, you could not go away from genre. It was country and country only. So mm -hmm. that's a very, very creative way to get a, to get a little bit of that flavor in for those uh, for the crowd there. Cool idea. Joshua, we're going to wrap things up. Again, again, if you have uh, a question for him, find him on Facebook, and he will get back to you, and you guys can ask questions and, and such because he's a very knowledgeable person. I've listened to a few of, of his uh, remixes that I've, that I've uh, been able to follow there. Some good stuff. Very talented. Very talented answer person. Your, you're getting told to answer your phone, John. I am? Or somebody's getting told to answer their phone. Yeah, not here. Not here. <laughs> they, they probably will, but for those of you who know, I can't see the phone tonight. It's, and we'll talk about that more in the next show. So, JD, thank you much for being on. I appreciate your, your knowledge and your passion for, for the whole music scene. And, and again, gang, hit him up. Ask questions. He'll definitely help you along. Don't be shy. Facebook. 
like I said, I'm, I'm, there's no secrets to anything I do. You know, it's all can be found, right? There's enough YouTube, YouTube tutorials and other things to find out how to do it. That, um, you know, find your own path, whatever you want to do. If you're having struggling finding them, find a mentor. That's my biggest thing. If you're into, into it, find mentors, you know, and, and that and good communication, the quality of your communication will reflect the quality of your DJ career. Yeah, definitely for sure. Cause there's a lot of people out there who definitely will spend the time to help, especially in, and you know, it's kind of that paying it forward for a lot of us. And, and some of us it's paying back to the industry. So yeah. We're going to wrap things up, gang. We'll be back in about about five minutes with our, our final show tonight. J.D., thanks for being on tonight. Okay. Thank you.